I'm Anushka Shankar and I've got a new album out called Traces of You. I'm an instrumentalist, I play the sitar, and I've worked with singers on the last few crossover records I've made. Um, and the last three records in particular, I had multiple singers on the album. On the last record, I had six different singers doing different things, and that was wonderful. But on Traces of You, I really wanted to create a more concise feeling of connectedness. My sister's Nora Jones. She has a slightly nice voice, and so when wanting to work with a voice, it's slightly obvious. It was weird, it was kind of a, the, the apex of my year making the record was my father passing away and it happened sort of at the middle point of the year of making the record. So, so there were certainly songs that started before that were disconnected, but there were songs that started before that were connected as well because it was, it was something that was happening in my life. And so, you know, in some songs cases, the performance of them happened afterwards. So emotionally it was totally affected by what happened and, and, and some of them, you know, are about other things as well. But but it was definitely the sort of biggest thing I went through that year. So it was the biggest emotional influence on the record. Um, the Sun Won't Set was one of the first songs we started working on. Uh, Nitin and I, Nitin Sony, the producer of the record, we wrote that song together last summer. And, um, and it started with an idea of the chorus I had in my head, which was playing around the fact that my dad's name, Ravi, means sun in Sanskrit. And so it was kind of more of a kind of poetic version of writing about the sun and the sunset. And Nitin and I helped me write some really lovely lyrics and uh, we kind of put a mock up together, sent it to Nora, she liked it. Um, and by the time we got to seeing her in New York in January, we'd done quite a few versions of the song, you know, different, um, different arrangements that went more pop, more rock, more electronic, more Indian. We'd kind of done a bunch and, and I kind of started to feel like I'd lost my way with it a little bit. And, um, and we did go with the most current arrangement. And, and I'm so grateful that when we got there, we just happened to sit in a room together and start playing it through and realized that, um, that playing it live was just so much better and so organic. So we just threw everything out the window and we got in the studio. Uh, Nathan played guitar, she sang and I played. And it was just, you know, it was, I think it's the second take that's on the record. And, and th those are the moments I love, you know, where it just ends up being people playing together. I do many different kinds of shows um, and, and one of the types of shows I do is, is a classical Indian setup and that's obviously built around my instrument and the other instruments are also acoustic traditional Indian instruments and they fit well together. So if we're in a concert hall together then, then everything's kind of set up quite well. Um, as soon as I start doing things uh, like uh, more experimental shows where I might be playing with louder Western instruments or particularly more electronic uh, louder instruments, then it can get a lot more challenging and there's a lot more work to do to translate the instrument live. But, but in a normal setup, that, that isn't so difficult. Studio is different, you know, you can really create the exact kind of sound and feel you want to in a studio and it's a lot more intimate. It's a very quiet instrument and I can get away with playing it very gently and still have all of the tones come through. So I suppose studio is easier but not as much fun to yeah. me. <laughs> I started learning when I was seven, and it was incredibly casual for the first couple of years. Um, there was a lot of weight, as you say, attached to, to who my father was and what he played, and, and I think my parents, uh, thank God, were, were really sensitive to that, and there was a way in which my dad wanted to teach me, but he made it really, really clear to me that, that no one was forcing me to play, and, and I remember him having these sort of progressive check-ins check with me every few months. He'd sit me down and go, hey, are you still enjoying it? Do you want to learn? And, and, and I'd say yes, and, and I didn't know necessarily that I wanted to play for the rest of my life, but, but I knew I was enjoying it. Um, and as far as the instrument itself, uh, I, I, I'd had a, a, a half-size sitar made for me, so, so it was kind of to my body size. And then I went to a mid-size, and then at, at 12 I got my first sort of full-size sitar. Yeah. There are a lot of students, there are a lot of women learning. Um, I have been noticing when I go, you know, look in on classes or, or even if you turn on the TV and there's like a, in India for example, there might be a program that has a lot of Siddhar students performing something. There, there, there's way more women um, than I'm used to seeing 10 years ago. Um, so it is changing, um, but, but traditionally it's not, an, it, 
you wouldn't see many female instrumentalists being professional musicians and going out on the road and touring. And um, I guess I guess there's a, a need for female vocalists a different way. Um, and and so you know if women went into music, it was generally to sing, and, and instruments tend to tended to fall to the men, I guess. Hi, I'm Anushka Shankar. I've got a new album out called Traces of You. Look for me on Last FM. Sounds upon the